All right, so today we're gonna to talk about VBAT compensation. What the heck does VBAT compensation actually do? I don't even know. We're gonna talk about it right now. Okay, so obviously VBAT compensation compensates for your VBAT, but what does that actually mean? So let's look at the help here, see what we get out of that. Increases the PID values to compensate for the VBAT, like I just said, duh. And it'll give more consistent flight character throughout the flight. The amount of compensation that is applied is calculated based on the maximum voltage. All right, that looks up. So surely uh, YouTube University can teach us what VBAT compensation is. So it's a VBAT compensation enter Let's see what we got I already looked at this one <laughs> so I'm cheating there's not really anything out here on VBAT compensation uh, which surprised me maybe the search results somebody probably did something and the search results aren't really optimized or something it's not returning it but yeah I was really surprised not enough. so let's let's take a deeper look to figure this out, I'm going to show you what I did to get through some things in the code so you can kind of see how you could do these same things yourself if you're curious about certain things in Betaflight. So, let's just type in get VBAT. All right. So, I actually had to toggle this on and off, but you can see this VBAT gain right here. Okay, well, that's interesting. So let's see what that, and I didn't know that that was that toggle until I went back, toggled it off, and then I noticed, oh, that went to off. Okay, so that must be related. So if you do download Betaflight uh, and you have the code base, you can use Atom, which is a free software. And what I really like about Atom is you can go into here and hit uh, search in directory. So you can put in keywords like VBAT gain and it will search the entire project and look for that variable. Obviously, if it's a variable in the CLI, it has to be a variable in Betaflight somewhere. So once we see that come up, we can go ahead and click on that, and that takes us into the settings file, and that's where it's getting it from the uh, command line. So you can see that is toggled to this variable here. So let's, uh, it's a little bit of a daisy chain, honestly, to follow these things. So I'm gonna put in that in my search dialog. So after looking down through a couple of these, I noticed this is calculate VBAT. Mm, calculate, that sounds like something we want. So we'll click on that and come down and we can see battery scaler is a variable and it has some calculations. So it's essentially our, mac, our VBAT max cell voltage times the cell count divided by the voltmeter readings. So essentially, a long story short, if we go back under power and battery, right here it's this max cell voltage times the detected number of cells. So we can pop open Excel here real quick, and we can say, okay, so it's our max cell voltage, 4.3 is the default. It's gonna detect four cells, because I use a four cell battery, and that's going to have 17.2 volts. It was divided by the current cell voltage. So if I have a battery at 17.2 volts, which I won't, it'll be more like 16.5. That is what the the boost is it's a four percent increase essentially so it's a one point you know one divided by the other and then if you want the percent increase you just do the absolute value of one minus that anyways so that is it now these are the default pids in the current build of beta flight 4.0 so that is our pids there we can smooth those out a little bit and you can see it's actually interesting because the defaults will give you a four percent increase in your pids right off the bat I typically don't use high volt batteries, so I'm never at 4.3 volts. And honestly, even at my normal battery voltage, it's usually down at 16.2, you know, 60, because not, it doesn't put all four cells at, you know, 4.2 volts exactly, so they have a little bit of a fluctuation. They're up there, but nevertheless. Uh, as your battery voltage goes down, you can see, it, you know, if I go down to 14 uh, volts, uh, 13 if I really have a, a dip at the end of the battery or whatnot uh, at around 14 volts so where you're gonna land you're gonna get a 23% increase in your PIDs now digging into a little bit further it doesn't actually multiply by each PID it actually multiplies it by the PID sum in the mixer so which is essentially the same thing here is if you're multiplied each PID up this is what the actual PID so a 35 goes to a 43 and a 47 uh, but in reality what it does is it just adds 
the PIDs up and the PID sum and then multiplies that times the increaser here you can see it's the same result like here I just multiplied it each PID value and then added those straight across to get and you can see these two numbers are the same thing so just math it's the same same result just a simpler way to do it uh, for the code so one of the things when using VBAC compensation you need to consider is 4.3 really appropriate so if you wanted to get more boost you could probably go the other way with this right if you if you want a VBAC compensation to like I, I need a little bit more meat to that uh, you could probably take this up to uh, 4.5, 4.6, you know, just I don't think there'd be any negative ramification for that. So, uh, yeah, you could, you could, using this, you could kind of adjust how much compensation you would get through VBAC compensation. So that is what VBAC compensation is. Well, thanks, everybody. I hope this helped.